name is Sarah Winky, and I was in a group with Adri Fransman and Erica Nickel. And today we're going to talk about brain cancer as your relative has just been diagnosed. So to first understand what brain cancer is, we need to understand what cancer is. So cancer is when your cells start dividing uncontrollably, and then those can form masses called tumors, and those can spread throughout the body. And the difference between cancer cells and regular cells are that cancer cells kind of ignore your body saying to stop dividing. And they can even surpass the immune system and mess up your blood vessels and things like that. And they can spread to the other parts of your body. And this can also be a genetic disease where it can be passed down through genes, but that's more uncommon. So there's 120 different types of brain cancers. So these symptoms are gonna vary widely. And most of the time, these symptoms are going to apply to other diseases as well. So we're gonna really have to do some further tests to really hone down on what we're looking at. But some common ones are gonna be headaches, nausea or vomiting, vision problems, speech difficulty, balance difficulty, and confusion. And then to assess what's going on, first we're gonna do a patient history. And this just basically means we're gonna ask you, when did your pain start? Where is the pain? Have anyone else in your family had something like this before? And then we're gonna do a psychological exam. And this is important for you as a family because brain cancer is a really scary thing sometimes and you guys are gonna to need to be there to support your relative. <clears throat> now we're gonna look at some causes. And since there's 100 different, 120 different types of cancers, the exact cause is unknown. However, there are a couple risk factors. One being ionizing radiation, and this is just basically radiation, particularly to your head area. And you've got some family history. Again, it can be genetic, unlikely, but it could be. And then your age. As you get older, your cells um, dividing process can sometimes break down and it's more likely to have a malfunction. Smoking, just don't do it. It's not good for you in any part of your body system and smoking is another risk factor for brain cancer. And finally, exposure. And this is things like pesticides, herbicides, fertilizer, lead, rubber, petroleum, those types of things. So you kind of want to stay away from those harmful chemicals because those can cause your cells to divide rapidly. And then finally, metastasized cancers. And this just basically means that you could have cancer in your lungs per se, and that could spread to your brain. So once a cancer gets in your system, it can really, it can really go anywhere it wants to. So to diagnose brain cancer, we're first gonna do a neurological exam. And this picture right down here, you can see the flashlight being shown in her eyes. And this can kind of see pupil responsiveness. We can kind of see where the uh, cancerous tumor might be pushing up on the brain or what it might be affecting. And that'll be helpful to diagnose exactly what we're looking at. And then imaging tests. So we've got CT, MRI, PET scan, and these are basically just machines that we're gonna put your relative in so we can see exactly where it is, how big it is, and how we can treat it best. And then a lumbar puncture. You can see that top um, picture there, and we're gonna usually insert this needle, and they're not gonna be able to feel it because we're gonna numb them up. But we're gonna insert a needle in their lumbar vertebrae between three and four, and that's on your lower back here. And we're going to insert this needle and take a little bit of their cerebrospinal fluid. And this is basically just the, the fluid that encompasses the spinal cord. And we're going to be able to test that fluid to see if there's cancerous cells in there. And finally, we're going to be doing a brain biopsy. And this is where we take a little chunk of the tumor um, surgically, and we're going to biopsy. Basically, we're going to see if it is malignant, which means that it is cancerous and that it is very harmful to your body. So for treatments, we've got a couple options. In surgery, we're going to try and either remove the entire tumor, which is best case scenario, or we're gonna try and remove part of it and then treat the rest of it with other methods. And then another way we can treat it is radiation therapy. And this is like high energy beams, like x-rays or protons, just basically kind of shooting stuff at that tumor, trying to kill those cells that have just crazily multiplied. Radio surgery is the picture down there um, with the laser beams hitting that exact spot on the head where the tumor is. And this is helpful because we can kill the tumor cells as we're cutting into the brain tumor with surgery. And then chemotherapy, which I'm sure you've heard of, basically we're gonna inject this drug into your relative that's gonna try and kill off these cancer cells. 
Some side effects with this is that they are gonna lose their hair, which are some healthy cells, but that's just what happens. And they might experience nausea and vomiting. So it's gonna be important that you will support your relative in this process. And finally, they're gonna need rehabilitation, most likely um, in case the tumor has affected any part of their motor functions. So finally for prognosis and follow-up, um, it really depends on when the tumor was detected how far along it was, and how big and what type it is. So there are a lot of factors into it, but it can be pretty well if we can get it all with surgery or other types of treatment. The glioblastoma is the most harmful type of brain cancer, and typically you're looking at 24 months to five years of a life expectancy after diagnosed with the glioblastoma. So we're hopefully not gonna find that. And finally, your relative is gonna to have to come to a lot of follow-up appointments and treatments, and we're gonna do lots of routine checkups with screenings to just make sure that that cancer is not gonna come back or that we can contain it in a controlled level. If you'd like to see more information, this is where I got most of mine, and if you have any questions, let me know.